let's now uh, try to see what is the difference between a fresh water or a salt water drowning right in the beginning i told you fresh water drowning is something where a person has fallen into a water source which is hypotonic to blood okay to understand the whole pathophysiology the difference of pathophysiology between fresh water and salt water drowning let's try and understand this scheme consider this circle to be alveolus okay so consider this circle to be an alveoli and this is a blood vessel around the alveolus so this is a normal area of blood gas exchange right now when a person has fallen into water the water which is terminally reaching is alveolus so all the water is coming into the alveolus and we say that this water which is coming into the alveolus is hypotonic so let me denote hypotonicity by a downward arrow and it is hypotonic in comparison to what in comparison to blood which is present in blood vessel which is comparatively hypertonic so blood present in the blood vessel is comparatively hypertonic as denoted by the upward arrow so now what it happens here is that there is a tonicity gradient between two permeable membranes and because of this tonicity gradient what will happen water will flow from hypotonic segment to hypertonic segment in an attempt to maintain isotonicity and so water is going to flow from alveolus into blood okay so water flows from alveolus to blood vessel as a result what will happen to the vascular circulation as a result vascular circulation will become hemodiluted okay let me write vascular circulation here so blood will become hemodiluted and as the blood will become hemodiluted what will it do it will cause rbc swelling and rupture initially the rbc will swell up and eventually they will rupture okay as the blood had become hemodiluted what will happen to sodium the sodium which is chiefly an extracellular ion it will also become diluted so there will be hyponatremia right because of hemodilution there will be hyponatremia because sodium is chiefly extracellular and because of rbc swelling and subsequent rupture what is going to happen lot of potassium is going to leak out into the extracellular space because potassium is chiefly an intracellular ion that means rupture of cells is going to cause hyperkalemia okay so what do we see in fresh water drowning is hemodilution with hyponatremia and hyperkalemia right but on the same hand what would be the picture of lungs in these cases see in this case lot of water which was coming into lung was getting exited into the vascular circulation as a result lungs 
develop a peculiar picture called as large and voluminous lungs they are able to retain their shape and borders so large and voluminous lungs which are able to retain their shape and borders okay this is how the picture of lung looks like now these people have a very peculiar threat to their life and that threat is rapidly developing hyperkalemia because rapidly developing hyperkalemia is potentially arrhythmogenic these people who fall in fresh water they die due to arrhythmia of hyperkalemia their mean survival time is 3 minutes so this hyperkalemia which has resulted due to cellular rupture causes cardiac arrhythmia mean survival being 3 minutes that's the pathophysiology of fresh water drowning now let's see what happens in salt water drowning so in salt water drowning what we see now is that the water which is entering into the alveolus is relatively hypertonic documented by that upward arrow in comparison to blood which is relatively hypotonic right as a result the tonicity gradient reverses now more water will go from vessels into the lungs in an attempt to maintain isotonicity so the exit of water will be from vessel into lungs okay so water had flown from vessels into lung so what is the blood picture that we are going to observe here the blood picture that we are going to observe here is hemo concentration and because of hemo concentration there will be hypernatremia because sodium is chiefly extracellular so when extracellular fluid volume is reducing because there is hypo concentration so automatically there will be relative hypernatremia okay these people die solely of drowning asphyxia not because of any cardiac arrhythmia as was seen in cases of fresh water drowning okay they die of drowning asphyxia their mean survival is little more their mean survival is 5 to 8 minutes so death due to drowning asphyxia right mean survival is 
is 5 to 8 minutes. So, what do we learn from this talk is that pathophysiology in freshwater and saltwater drowning are completely different and mean survival is higher in saltwater drowning. Okay. Not only that, even the lung pictures are different. So, what do we see in saltwater drowning is that lot of water was coming in lungs and furthermore, more water was coming into lungs from vascular circulation, right? As a result, lungs in these cases develop a picture called as heavy and boggy lungs. They are unable to retain their shape or borders because they get filled up with water so much they swell up like balloon like a water balloon if you keep on adding water into a water balloon it keeps on swelling up more and more and more and every time its shape becomes more globular that's how lungs become. So, they are not able to retain their shape and borders. And as they will keep on, you know, swelling up more and more because of more water coming into it, what will happen? They will start to push onto the rib cage from inside. And so, they are going to have deep rib impression marks on their surface. So, you are going to have deep rib impression marks on their surface. This is how morphology of the lungs is also different in both the cases. So, if we compare the morphology of lung in both the cases, if we go back to our previous slide, what do we see? That in freshwater drowning, lungs were large, large and voluminous. They were able to maintain their shape and borders. Whereas, what is the morphology of lungs in cases of uh, Salt water drowning, heavy and boggy, unable to retain their shape or borders, deep rib impression marks present on their surface, right? So, this is how pathophysiology alters. <laughs>